Get in the frame, buddy Meister. The whole world needs to see the man who did such a stupid thing. <laughs> Stop crying. It's not like I didn't warn you. You're still crying. Stop it. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Here, take this gun. Shoot me. I insist. Come on, shoot me. What's that? It's not working, Jimmy. Okay, put it away. Here, old school. Shoot me. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and I'm Dennis the Body Meister and yes, we finally did it, we watched Vikram Veda. The recommendations and comments were piling up in the last weeks, so we did our best to get hold of the movie and well, thanks for your recommendations. Vikram Veda is a great movie. Vikram Veda is a 2017 Tamil language neo-noir action thriller that was written and directed by Pushkar Gayatri, a husband and wife filmmaker duo from Chennai and, believe it or not, the only married couple directors in Asia. Oh, I believe you. That's not a very common thing. True, the couple has been in the industry since 2007. They have, till date, written and directed three feature Tamil movies, Orampo, VA Quarter Cutting and Vikram Veda, which is their biggest movie so far, not only from a production standpoint, but also in terms of critical and financial success. Vikram Veda stars Madhavan as Vikram and Vijay Setupati as Veda. There are a few other known actors and actresses in there as well, but let's be honest, they are footnotes in this big Madhavan Setupati show. Totally. I guess Shraddha Srinath, whom we know from U-Turn, has an interesting part as well, but it gets definitely pushed further in the background in the course of the movie. The story in general, or let's call it the framework, isn't super original or anything, but that doesn't matter because the execution is incredibly entertaining and intriguing. Everything's done with a very confident finesse. The film begins with an animated sequence. It's an interpretation of the Indian folktale Baital Pachisi, where a Vetala, that's a revenant, mostly defined as some kind of evil spirit, asks King Vikramaditya if he can tell him a story. Now this tale of the Vetala correlates with the modern day lives of Vikram, a police inspector who is decisive about right and wrong, and Veda, a criminal who seemingly understands the grey shades between good and evil. Vikram leads an encounter unit formed to eliminate Veda. In one encounter, the squad killed some of Veda's henchmen, framing the death of a criminal killed by Vikram to avoid further inquiry. Vikram has no problem with that, because he knows that the men he shot were criminals. As the unit plans another encounter to get Veda, Veda enters the police station and surrenders. When Vikram interrogates him, he offers to tell him a story. And that's where things really start rolling. But up to this point, it's no less exciting, because the movie takes its time to introduce Vikram's counterpart. Veda's reputation precedes him, for the characters in the movie and for us as viewers, so the 30 minutes till the introduction of Veda are all about building tension and excitement. Oh yeah, but in essence that applies to the whole movie, because with each story that Veda tells to Vikram, more secrets, more realities and more truths are revealed, so you always stay excited and interested, because the things you've seen are suddenly displayed in another light. The three stories that Veda tells are told in flashbacks. The first story is set 13 years earlier, the second one two years earlier and the third one three months earlier. And it's like you said, the lines between good and evil begin to blur until finally they are not visible at all. Yep. Before we move into spoiler territory, let's talk about Madhavan and Vijay Setupati. They are both pretty awesome and who would have thought that a nice guy like Madhavan could become such a Badass. <laughs> I didn't, for sure. It mean, it's not like we've seen dozens of movies with him, but you only have to go back to Three Idiots, where he played such a humble and lovely guy. I mean, he's still lovely in Vikram Veda, kinda, but he's also a determined and grim cop. He is, but Vijay, man, we watched quite a few of his movies and he always rules, especially when he plays more sinister characters. I know we're still only at the beginning of our journey into Indian cinema, 
but he's one of my favorite actors, period. I would watch a movie only because he's in it. I can totally understand that. And he's awesome in Vikram Veda. And the man can dance. Tasaku Tasaku is a blast. <laughs> The movie has a lot of music, but not a lot of song and dance sequences. But Tasaku Tasaku is top notch, a strong contender for my personal top 10 of best song and dance sequences. Because it feels totally unique. It unfolds in this very narrow space, a small bar where dozens of men are drinking and just having a good time. It's joyful, it's crazy, it's sweaty and simply contagious. <laughs> Absolutely. One of those musical numbers that makes you want to jump from your seat and start dancing yourself. But back to Madhavan and Vijay. They have a good chemistry and I think because of the well-written screenplay the interactions between them just work. The dialogue is fluid and you're actually able to follow everything without losing your way with the whole story. Yeah, it might be a bit convoluted at certain moments, but you are right, we were never lost while watching it. In that way the narrative, but most of all the revelations which are integrated into the story in a relatively sophisticated way, work. The revelations aren't played out as these big happenings, I like that, but the whole narrative also works because we actually have characters with a history and a bit of a background. Not much, but at least we have something. With Veda more than with Vikram, I think, but it's true, that's something that is missing in so many of these crime thrillers. It's really refreshing to care for a change. This movie can be quite complex, it's almost surprising. <laughs> can be, yes, but if we talk about the last quote of the movie, it's turning into this almost light-hearted buddy movie. But it's still entertaining. Yeah, it's probably the most entertaining part of the whole film. But first, spoiler warning, because we will talk about the ending from now on. John Woo's The Killer meets Lethal Weapon. Yeah, not the worst way to describe it. I think it's no big surprise that Vikram and Veda work together in the end to fight the real crooks, which are all the other cops. Something like that, yes. Those dirty cops, I hate them. <laughs> they get what they deserve. Vikram and Veda shoot all of them. Mm. Paka. <laughs> But not to kill, only to incapacitate them. Except the police chief, he gets shot execution style. Yeah, well, yes, the movie swerves a bit, but it never goes off the rails and becomes this totally unrealistic and over-the-top mess that destroys or damages everything that came before. I mean, parts of the story could have been handled in a better way, especially because they were teasing us. Uh, for example? For example, they indicate this conflict between Vikram and his wife Priya, who is a lawyer and becomes the attorney of Veda, and they do show a few scenes where she and Vikram discuss and fight about it, but as we said in the beginning, Priya unfortunately more or less disappears in the background over time and is not allowed to play a crucial role in the outcome. I guess it makes sense when you look at how the story unfolds, but still, it would have been nice to have this third element in the mix to stir things up. Absolutely. That narrative would have made Vikram Veda even more significant, I think. But nonetheless, we have a cool story, great actors, an intriguing story, strong direction and... Tasaku. Of course, yes. Those 140 minutes just flew by. Superb movie. For once, this was a movie that I could have kept on watching for another hour. It would have probably hurt the narrative and made it less tight, but the energy and the banter between our two leads was just so intriguing. That's for certain. It was also just really refreshing to have two protagonists that are more layered. Let's be honest, when the movie started we were a little bit afraid that this would be another film with a no-nonsense cop, as even the IMDb summary has it, that is just taking the law in his own hands without any layers to him. Yeah, very true. I was so relieved that Vigram has an arc in this. Of course, it's still not a very realistic movie and when you think about it, he still had killed a lot of people in this vigilante kind of way and still gets a rather happy ending. But the movie doesn't want to be this realistic crime thriller, but more so this parable about the nature of good and evil, justice and revenge, all wrapped up in an exciting genre movie. And at that, it succeeds. So, in German we'd say? Vikram Veda ist ein verdammt unterhaltsamer Streifen. Tolle Schauspieler, selbstbewusste Inszenierung, eine spannende und nicht übermäßig verkomplizierte Story und keine Minute Langeweile. 
Daumen hoch für Pushka Gayatri. I give Vikram Veda 8 out of 10. It's more like 7.9, but I don't do that. For me, it's also 8 out of 10. It's more like 8.2, but I don't do that either. So that's it for today. This was our review of Vikram Veda. Now comment below and let us know what you think about the movie. And you can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram simply at the Jimmy Cage. And you can hit me up at the Body Meister. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all we have to tell. Servus, Freunde. <laughs> so that's Servus, keine Ahnung, mit Ö irgendwie Servus. Ach, Alter. So. <laughs> <laughs> Quatsch, man. It's nice, aber, ne?